Today I'm going to show you how I replace a wheel bearing on this 2013 Pure Smart Car, more Smart Pure, whatever you want to call it. I just got done doing the passenger side, and so I figured I'd film the driver's side here just to help people understand what's involved. I got my floor jack. I've got jack stands. I didn't use them. I just throw a couple tires underneath. Uh, you do need something for safety, but I don't get the car up high enough that my regular jack stands will work. Anyways, this is what I use, and I'll explain why. This is a little block of wood that I'll show you in a minute that sits on the floor jack, and it goes up in a little recess under the body on about the only place that you can jack up underneath without having to remove all the plastic uh, ground effects and whatever that cover under there is. A hammer, because you're going to beat on stuff. I really love these. These are the Harbor Freight tire irons, and these work really good for holding the lower control arm down and prying and so forth. I use them for about everything except working on tires. Breaker bar where needed. Because I didn't take the sway link bushing off and popped it out of the socket, I had to press it back in with a C-clamp. Block of wood here that I use for holding the A-arm down while I'm getting the lower ball joint disconnected. Vice grip comes in handy. Covers a multitude of sins. I've got a quarter inch uh, socket here and let me check what the... it's a quarter inch. Because I put these Torx bits in it and if you want to take off the dust shield which I recommend you're going to need a T30 T50 bit the reason I got three here is two of them are the same size my trusty old proto with three eighths on one side and half on the other awesome vintage tool and that's my baby three eighths extension where needed and then our socket regimen these are what they call the E sockets E Torx you're going to need one that's a 10 and a 14, I believe. Yep. And then, oh, I miss working on Volkswagen sometimes where everything's standard, but we've got 11, 16, 17, and 18 mil. 18's weird. I buy wrench sets from Harbor Freight, and they always don't leave the 18 out, but you're going to need it for this. <clears throat> 16 mil wrench. This is my tire iron. This is a 15 mil, so I guess you'd need that too in this lineup so we're already up to what one two three four five six seven sockets for crying out loud but anyways this is my uh, homebrew spare tire iron since smart doesn't give you one it just gives you that stupid little patch kit I just got an impact socket welded it onto a standard tire iron so there's my 15 the grease gun simply use that to grease up the struts when I put the knuckle back on it slides a little easier or so I'd like to think WD-40 for the same reason and my impact wrench. Highly recommended you have it. If you're the kind of guy that likes to pull on stuff, strip things out, cuss and everything, then forget about it. Anyways, I'm just gonna film bits and pieces here. It's probably not gonna make a whole lot of sense, but first thing I do is I take my Harbor Freight tire iron, or my tire tool, and I just carefully poke it underneath. Gotta film with one hand, wedge it in there, and just pry out a little bit. It'll give up, and you can just pull it off. Lay that over there. Next thing we're going to do, should always get in the habit of this. These will already be loosened because I had it off once before. I don't know why people like to jack the car up first and then break the lug nuts loose. You do it with it on the ground. And so this is how my little tire tool works. Just like this. And they're already loose, as I told you. So, you loosen them up. Now... I can tell you before this is all said and done, I'm going to have to get me a trouble light out here. I usually just work without one, but for the sake of the video. Underneath the car here, let's see if we can see it. Right here, where's my hand? You know what? Let me get a light. I'll get my little flashlight here. Where'd I put that? There it is. Oh, Getty. If you look under the smart car, they got all these plastic stuff under here, and you need that because there's sensitive things under there that you don't want to get mud and snow on. But if you look, where is it? Right here. See how there's a... There's a cutaway in the plastic, and there's a metal piece. I'm sure there's some kind of a special device that Smart wants you to put up in that hole.
to lift that, but that's this block of wood that I put up in here like this. If I can find that recess. There it is on the other side. So I'll put that block of wood up in that hole, right up in there. And then I jack up on that. So let me lay the phone down and get my jack in here. Okay, this is what it looks like with my block of wood in there. Just holds it up off the jack. Just fits in there. So, next thing we'll do is simply jack the car up. I just go high enough just to get the wheel off the ground. That's all I need. Okay, we got it. So I'll go ahead and Take that wheel off, you undo the, the three lugs, or three bolts, and this plastic piece just pops off. So it gives you a little piece to set your bolts in. Okay, the wheel just comes off, and we'll slide it under the car, and then we'll put a, another one under there. Okay, so here's what you're looking at under your smart car. You got the rotor, you got the caliper, the strut assembly. And the first thing we're going to do is right here is just this little little bolt. They don't really need it, but it keeps your rotor from falling off when you take the wheel off. And I believe that's a T30. And if you have like a little cordless impact or something to unscrew that, it's great. But I just have my quarter inch socket that fits onto the bit. So I'm going to take that off next. All right, and I forgot to mention the tool lineup need a piece of bailing wire because now that I have removed that little little bolt that was in there I need to take this off but before I do I gotta take this caliper off so on the back side let me get my torch and flashlight you can see this um, see there's a bolt right there right in the dead center you're not going to undo that one that's part of the caliper itself you want what's down in here deeper which is if I can find that yeah there's one you see that one right there that's the bottom one and then there's a top one hidden up in here someplace there it is. It's right, right there. And so to get them off, it's going to take, let's see which one it is. That's the 18 millimeter. So take your two 18 millimeter bolts off, then use that bailing wire and hang your caliper up off one of the coils up here on the strut. I'll do that next. Well, in order to get the caliper off, I had to put that little bolt back in, so maybe you want to do that after you take the caliper off, those two 18 millimeter bolts. But I'll just go ahead and unscrew this. And then you're left with that. I'll set this rotor down. Okay, there's uh, some people take this whole knuckle off, leave a shield on, but I'm just going to go ahead and take those off. There's a bolt there. That's going to be T30. You've got one up here, T30. 
And there's another one back in here. And I was wrestling in there with a short bit, and it dawned on me you can just rotate this hub and stick your bit and socket right through there and reach this bolt. So take those three off next. You have the dust shield off. Back here we have an E10 bolt that holds a wheel speed sensor on. So go ahead and take that take that off. There's a another video I saw on YouTube where a guy shows what he's doing here. It's a lot better than this. But I'm just this is seat of the pants stuff. You kind of have to be careful and wiggle the sensor out, and there it comes out. Now what's interesting is over here. There is a, um, let's get the flashlight back on it. There's a plastic clip that that wheel speed sensor wire goes through. To get that clip off on this side, you kind of just lift up on that piece carefully with a screwdriver and you slip that whole plastic piece off and just get it out of the way. And then the wire is held in here with a, a little grommet with a slit that matches a, a groove in that plastic clip. And then I take that whole thing and I just throw it up in that hole up in there, get it out of the way. So go ahead and do that. I wanted to show you that uh, clip. Let me get the flashlight on it again here. This is that plastic clip I removed. Get this flashlight set up in here, right? And. You see right here, this is this little one. It goes in just like this. It slips right towards you. So you have to kind of lift that clip up. And get under there very careful without breaking it. And I do it by just going up, putting the screwdriver under that slit right there that's right above my thumbnail. And go up under there and pry that out. Anyways, you don't have to take that piece off of there. I did. But you can just see, I just take this whole wheel speed sensor then and just tuck it up in there get it out of the way. Okay, next we got to work on getting this tie rod off and disconnect that. And so while we got the camera going, let's just see what size that is. Okay, that is going to be 17. So we got to bust that thing off and get that off next. And um, yeah, I'll do that. Be right back. I got this nut busted off. Now I've seen a lot of times where people take these nuts off and they pound on the raw threads and wonder why it won't re-thread. So any time on a tie rod, ball joint, or any of these things that you're pounding on, you always put the nut back on, preferably flush with the end of the stud, and then pound on that. So I did about five whacks and it broke loose. So we can unscrew this and then we can just lift that out of there for now. So now, next thing we want to do is get this top... Um, that's that sway bar link. Disconnect that or you'll pop it loose on this. So let's do that next. Um, let's see, that's going to be, oh, let me thread this nut back on the tie rod so we don't lose it. Okay, good enough. And that was, I think that was a 16 actually. It's another size. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, where is it in the video, right here, let's get some light on it. Sorry this video, I'm not very good at this. We're going to get that sway bar link off of there so we don't break it. We'll do that next. Okay, that sway bar link didn't want to come off with an uh, impact wrench, you just want to sit there and spin. So what I've had to do is put my 16 millimeter wrench on the nut, and in the middle of that is a T30 Torx, so I've got my socket wrench hooked to that. So you can either hold the Torx wrench your torque socket and then loosen the nut or you actually set your you can spin the stud inside the nut so you gotta think opposite you would actually turn righty tighty lefty loosey on the nut well as you are tightening the nut that's the same as going let's see here I can't let's see how I've got it set yeah I've actually got it set as if I was tightening the stud but when you turn the stud that way that actually backs the nut off so I'll continue to work on that and then we'll move on to something else. I about got it out but the sway bar link wants to jam up. So what you do, this is where that Harbor Freight tire iron works good. I hook that curved part of my tire iron under that, that there's just a little metal horn there, a metal lip. You can see where I've got that 
hooked under there and I can pry down on that sway bar and when I do watch that link that piece up there see it just basically it popped itself right out so you just do that by prying down prying down right there that lip on that sway bar link good old Harbor Freight tire irons okay the next thing is going to be um, we're gonna get rid of this bolt up here and it's a weird one the head on that is a e14 Torx I'm pretty sure looks like there might be some mud and junk on that yeah so I got e14 Torx on that one and then on the other side the nut let's see that's a 17 so that's probably the 16 which that's gonna be on the impact wrench here Yeah, so E14 torques on this side, 16 mil on the other side, and then that bolt comes out, and that's the bolt that locates this uh, knuckle onto the strut. And then, once that's off, or it won't just fall off, I mean the bolt will come out. Once that's off though, and let me find my light again, we're going to take the bottom ball joint off, which is, let's see if I can get on the camera right there and that's that's impact work there and let's see what size that one actually is I think that's the 17 nope that's 18 mil on the bottom so I'm gonna shut the camera off and get these things disconnected and then it's hammer time where I can save you a lot of time if you just do what I say down in the top of that ball joint bolt is a um, place to insert a T50 bit so I was able to impact the nut off of there. Then I used a hammer and I tapped that bit down in there because it collects dirt and everything. So you really want to get it seated. So then what you do, if you notice, now I've moved my Harbor Freight tire tool to grab the shaft that holds the A-arm under there. That hook on the end just fits in there nice. So now I can bear down and push on the A-arm. And what you do is you push down as hard as you can on this tire tool while taking your hammer and giving a couple good sharp whacks right there and that ball joint will pop loose. Watch this, you just see it's loose. So what we have to do now is it's it's hard because it doesn't want to move easy but we've got to pry that A-arm all the way down and get that ball joint out from that knuckle. So we got to wiggle that bit and it's going to take a little doing so I'll shut the camera off for that but I'll get that bit out of there and I'll pull that A-arm down, we'll have this knuckle free. Now you see I've got the lower ball joint free now. When, at the start of the video I said you need a block of wood. What I'm going to do is pry that A-arm down. And let me just set this piece of wood up in there. And when I pry, pry down on that A-arm, there will be a gap that forms between it and the, the sway bar, or the torsion bar, or suspension bar, whatever, anti-sway bar and I'll wedge that block of wood in there to keep holding this down out of the way. So that's what I'll do next. So block of wood went on top of the tire tool here. If I wiggle it I can get it out of there but it's not going to be a big deal. Now, in one of the other YouTube videos I saw, this is the tough part, you have to get this off of here and it slides down. So it's going to take WD-40, it's going to take a lot of tapping with a hammer. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done and then I'll show you the aftermath. Unless you can come up with a better idea, I would suppose that the official method is to remove the entire strut and then take it to some kind of press assembly, but we don't work with that level of refinement around here. Well, you can see what I've done here is I put a C-clamp on this piece of wood and hooked it onto my, just underneath here is the thing that the tie rod hooks to for the steering. And so while I bear down on this, you see that board is up under there and it's pushing up under the car and it's wide so it's not hurting anything. And that way I can push down on that while I tap on this knuckle. Every time I hit, I can make more progress because I've got my weight pushing down on it. So it's about ready to come off. You can get creative with levers on this stuff. That's pretty much all it is. It's just being creative with levers and trying not to damage anything in the process. So let's go ahead and get this off of here and then we'll have to run to the press. Okay, so there the knuckle is free. So we got to go over to the other shop and utilize the press. So let's go do that. Here we are at the press. We got this conglomeration of all kinds of stuff, years of press work and 
They're real scraps of metal. And we got it all set up in here so when we pump the handle you can listen. It's coming out. So I'll work on getting that bearing out and then I'll show you how to how I press it back in. Alright, we had to rebuild the stack several times, but there's the old bearing that's been pressed out. Now from what I've read, the inside of the knuckles got ridges. It's supposed to allow for pressing in and pressing out bearing several times before it's wore out. And you can see the ridges in there. So anyways, put them back in. You got a better surface right here, but you got this in the way and this in the way. I think that's a wheel speed sensor and this thing. So what I did is I had this scrap piece of pipe and I just took an old bench grinder and a vice grip and just ground on it and so what this allows me to do, you see those two notches in there, the holes were already there, but it allows me to set this up so that this pipe will go right on there like that and you can see actually it goes like this. You can see where that clearances for that um, piece there that'd be the lower ball joint mount and then over here it clearances for that wheel speed sensor hole so I'll get this all set up and then you can watch me press it in oh before I do that just to show you when you get the new assembly it comes with these pins and they pass through the the hub so it actually pushes on the bearing instead of pushing on the assembly which could potentially core the bearing out and put excessive side load on it but it, you can't really see it but the the pins actually go through and push on the bearing and the bearings can't be replaced on the hub because as you see that's flared out and it's pressed in there and you never get it off so this is as far as you can tear it down reasonably okay I'll get this set up and then you can watch me press it in as it turns out that pipe I made would only work on the other side so I just rigged this up it's not perfect, but if you watch it, you know, you can see the bearing is going in and it's pushing on those pins as it goes in. So it'll come to a point where it just won't go anymore. So we'll just keep pumping, making sure we're making progress. And there it locked up tight, so we're in all the way. bits and pieces in the bin pull our pin pull our pins out here and you can see now this is a job you're not going to accomplish without a press but you know if you know somebody with a press or there's a shop that would do the press work for you you'll be set we've got it in there it just can't go in any further it bottomed out so that's where it's going to be and so the next shot will be uh, putting back on the car Okay, we got the uh, knuckle started on there, and the, the key thing is when you start it on there, well, first of all, I like to grease this all up. That way it'll slide as good as possible, but it's still a tight fit. What you want to watch for is if you notice that slit there needs to align with that metal tab on the strut. If you don't get that lined up in that gap, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to twist that strut independently of that knuckle. So you want to get that lined up. Then, the other thing I did on the other one, is I just simply took this board, and I kind of designed, had some levers, a sledgehammer, and whatever else, and just pry up under this knuckle while I tap with a hammer here. And when you get some upward leverage on that, it's amazing how much quicker it will scoot up the shaft. We want to get that hole to line up with that right there, so we can put our bolt in there. So that's what I'm going to work on. As you can see, I got the knuckle back up. I don't have the bolt in there, but I started with this board on the floor and then I scooted the spare tire over and it's just the perfect height for this block of wood. And you can get these blocks of wood at lumber yards. They're called dunnage boards and they set units of lumber on them. Usually guys will give them to you for free. I know because I'm one of the guys that gives them out for free. But anyways, I could pry up on the tire with this board. While I pounded on it, just boom, boom, boom. It just slammed right up there it went really quick as long as you can get some le leverage applied down below so anyways I'm gonna get the bolt in there and we can just go ahead and film that I've kept all my bolts together in that little plastic cup that comes off the tire so there's our bolt kind of swivel that around there 
unthread the knot. That should just go right in, which it did. And then I'll go ahead, reach in here. I know you don't see it on the video. I'll get that nut started. And then, since I'm a big believer in putting the nuts back on any ball joint or tie rod once removed to prevent damage to the threads, I'm going to unscrew that nut. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera off for this, but I'm going to pry down on this A-arm and get that tie rod shaft up here in this knuckle. And then uh, I'll work on getting those two bolts in. Okay, I just want to show you this uh, bolt up here, right there. That's that E14 with a 16 mil nut on the back side. And I got that tightened up. Now down here, this is, uh, since I don't have an 18 millimeter wrench, this is my sin. I've, I had to, you can't just put an impact on that. You should always use torque wrenches. But it'll just spin until you get the taper of the ball joint shaft into the taper of the knuckle. So what I do is kind of like we did before on that uh, sway bar linkage. Um, sway link, whatever the heck it's called. I use a T50 bit. And side of there tapped in with a hammer with my quarter inch socket, quarter inch drive ratchet. And that way you can hold that stud while you get that nut tightened down. And once it tightens down, you can get on there with your torque wrench and it tightens right up. So I'll get those tight and we'll move on to the next step. Now to get the sway bar link installed, I'm not down underneath the shaft on the A-arm. I'm actually under that metal lip there, the horn on the chassis. And I'm going to pry that sway bar down so that I can get this stud into that hole there and push it in all the way. So being as I'm filming by myself, I can't show it. But you pry that down, and then when you do, you can line the stud up, shove it through there, and then spin the nut on the end quick. So I'll get that done next. Just like the ball joint, what I had to do was put a T30 Torx bit in that sway bar link keep it from spinning while well, I did the nut. Actually, I spun the nut on while I turned the shaft, and of course you have to spin the shaft counterclockwise while you spin the nut clockwise to get it to tighten up. So we're getting close. Once we do that, then we're going to go ahead and get our uh, steering knuckle tie rod in put back in. And generally you can just kind of pound that down with your hand, and it'll stay good enough while you tighten the nut on. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. Now's a good point. Good point. Um, get our flashlight on here to get our plastic clip put on for our wheel sensor, and I pulled it down from that hole I had it in, and it's back over here. I can show you how that hooks on there. This is that little tab I showed you earlier. You take off with a screwdriver. And so at this point, if I can get it in here, I probably should have put it on before that sway link, but I can get in there. And you just push it on like that. You hear it click in. And so it's sticking out over there on the front now. Our wheel speed sensor goes. Pull this over here. On the back here. I'm just doing it by feel. I think it's up in here. No, it's down on that lower side. Okay. So, let me um, turn this off and I'll get the camera reset up for the wheel speed sensor. Okay, I'm going to attempt to show you this. It's hard because of my lighting situation. But, uh, wheel speed sensor goes right there and there's the threaded hole it goes in so get my light set up it'll stay all right well you get the idea the sensor goes in the bigger hole and then the plastic tab that the bolt goes through goes over the threaded portion like that so I'll get that bolt in there it's an E10 bolt and get that done next Okay, next is time for the uh, putting the dust shield back on. I'm looking for what I did with my flashlight again in my pocket. Nope. 
Oh yeah, there it is. The other pocket. Okay. You see we've got dust shield bolt here, here, and then if you line this hole up, you can hold the bolt here and then get in there with your um, quarter inch wrench like this with the torx on it. You can reach that one. And um, so that will be the next thing. And make sure it's real easy. Usually this side's clean, this side's dirty on the back side here. Make sure that this little indentation down here in the center comes towards you. If it's away, you'll never get it on. It'll kind of start, it won't fit right. And so you want to make sure that this part's farther away from you and the center is closer to you. So let me get the dust shield on and we'll go to the next step. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is put the rotor back on. And it's a good idea to be careful not to touch this with greasy hands or if you do wipe it down with some kind of like carb cleaner, brake cleaner stuff or something like that. But anyways, what we have to do is line this hole up that's right by my thumb there with the hole, the threaded hole on the hub here. So let me rotate it so it's up top. There we go. So now we put this on. It should line up. Tell you what, you have a newfound respect for YouTubers that have all the right equipment to make a nice video hands-free. Anyways, there's our T30 bit. And what I like to do is get it started. Don't tighten it up yet, though, because there's just enough slop in there that could make your lugs not line up. So at this point, just to ensure that everything's lined up good, I like to hand thread the lugs in here to hold everything perfectly centered. Then when I do that, the bolts will actually go in and they hit something on the back side there because when you go to tighten this bolt up, it'll spin, it'll lock. Without the rim on there, the bolts stick out too far. I don't know what it's hitting on, but I'm not going to force it. And so to make sure that rotor is on there nice and centered, we get these all tightened up. Somebody set off a firecracker, tis the season. Okay, there's where that bolt's hitting. And so I'm going to just hand tighten that little security screw to hold the rotor on. So now we're all centered. And actually, if you were paying close attention, I actually accidentally threaded one of the caliper bolts in there. But it doesn't matter because those other two held it in alignment. And you see, right there, it'll go good. So, this is an interesting factoid. I wouldn't recommend substituting them for each other, but I suppose in a pinch you could. Alright, so now we'll get the caliper taken off the baling wire that's hanging up there, line it up with the two bolt holes and get those put on, and then I'll turn the camera back on. You will find when you go to put the caliper on a lot of times that it kind of relaxes and you can't get it on the caliper. So there's tools they have out there for spreading the calipers back apart, caliper spreaders. I just take my handy Harbor Freight tire tool, lay it in there and kind of wiggle it and pry and try to squeeze, make the gap a little bit bigger. Now these rotors have a lip on them, so I'm guessing they're probably needing to be turned. But I'm about, I got probably a good third pad life yet, so I'll probably let them go another year before I replace them. Just depends, this car gets driven on the highway daily. But anyways, we're back to where we started. This is where we need to put the wheel on, put the three bolts on put our plastic cap on the sandwich is in between the three bolts snug those bolts up those lug bolts as good as you can set the car down finish torquing them to spec and then put the hubcap back on so um, I'll go ahead and do that and then I can show you what the finished product looks like so I apologize for the lighting but it's the best I could do if it helps great if not go find you another video thanks for watching bye the finished product.
It took me about two hours to do this side. The other side took a little longer because I had to do it for the first time. Never done it on a little car like this. But anyways, hopefully that will help you see what it is like to do the front bearing replacement on a smart car. You do need a press or access to a press. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of nuts and bolts and having the right tool. So I wish you all the best on the repair. And it's not too difficult to do if you're familiar with that kind of thing. Otherwise, uh, if you feel like it's too much for you, it's the perfect excuse to go to a shop. Maybe let the mechanic watch my videos so he knows what he's in for. Anyways, that's it. I'll let you go. Peace.